Hey guys, I'm Aaron. I'm the developer of GMForge, and I'm going to be taking you through how to set up a basic encounter in the tool. So, because GMForge is agnostic, you'll have a choice between which sample template you want to choose that best fits your game. For this video, we're going to be using the 5th Dungeon's End Dragons template. So I create my new world, and then now I'll be greeted by the basic screen you get when you start. So one of the most basic things you're going to want to do is create actors for your encounter. If I go to the left menu bar and I go to Asset Manager, I am then able to create all different types of resources for my game. Here I'm going to go and create a new actor, which is essentially a character for your role-playing games. Now, in this menu, I'm able to change the name, I'm able to change the image, And I'm also able to change the map token of this character sheet. So I'm going to choose a dagger because we're going to give this character a dagger to use in the encounter. So to do so, I can simply create a new item by clicking on the inventory, which will then create a new entry in my inventory list. Here I can change the image, change the name, and also change the amount of this item I have. If I want to edit more advanced options, I can click on the edit field here and then start configuring this way. Here I'm going to go over to the weapons field and just add in a simple dice roll of 1d6 plus 2. Now when I confirm, the damage will display on this dagger. So I'm going to want to make this dagger a little bit more interactive. Here I can go to the actions tab. And you'll notice that it already has some actions pre-filled. A ranged attack, a melee attack, and then a damage attack. Now, these actions are able to be added to the hotbar, which you'll notice that the melee attack and the dagger attack are already added there. This works out pretty nicely because now, whenever I access the character on the map, you'll notice the dagger's melee attack and the dagger's damage attack are able for me to roll directly from this area. So 1d6 plus 2 gets added over here as weapon damage plus a bonus and a penalty. So now it's time we start thinking about the map. Where are we going to fight? What's it going to look like? Well, if you already have a battle map, you can easily set up one by simply going to the background and selecting the battle map from your list. We'll be using the sample content, but if you wanted to use your own, you could simply upload it to the local tab. Here you can select your battle map, and then voila, now we have a battle map. So, the next step in setting up our encounter will be to add enemies. So, the encounter I had in mind was for these players to fight a pretty low-level monster, or at least a group of low-level monsters. Now, I'm thinking to myself, hmm, the goblins from Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition are probably a good starting point. So, I can access the content library, and then go to the Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition SRD, and then look up the monsters I wish to add. Here, I'll find some goblins, and drop them onto the map. Now that I have my goblins, I'm probably going to want to give a couple of them some unique items. So I can open their character sheets, and then I can take any items from the SRD and drop it right onto the sheet. Once that's done, I can close my goblin sheet and then go to another one. So I've given a goblin a shield and I've given another goblin a mace. Now I'm done with my SRD and I'm ready to customize their tokens a little bit. So if I want to change the token shape, I can simply click on it go to the shape, and then select a new shape. Or, if I want to go to the advanced options, I can double click on a piece, and then select a shape from the bottom down below. Here I'm going to go with a pentagon, and then here I'm going to go with a hexagon. So now I have different shapes per token. Now, I feel like I'm pretty much ready to finish this encounter. But one last thing I'd like to change before I move on 
So I'd like to change the token from my player character, because the sword, while it makes sense, is not really flashy enough. So I can simply click on the token art, and then select a new token for this character to use. So I'm going to use a basic human, and then I'm going to assign them a token color, and then I'm going to change the token shape. Now you'll see my character actually looks a little bit more lively on the battlefield. If I want to make it a little bit more interesting to look at visually, I can change the token scale to give the battle a little bit more depth. There. Now I'm ready to invite my player. So I can invite my player by simply giving them an invite by clicking on the click to invite your party link down at the bottom. This will copy an invitation to a clipboard so that you can share it with your player and they can connect to you using a web browser. I can also reach the invite button if I already have people inside my game by using the invite on the side or going into the game options and clicking on game invite. So once I've done that, my player is now able to join me. Now you'll notice down at the bottom, I have a player one that has joined the session. So if I want to grab grant him access to the at Arshaviri character, I can simply right click on that character, go to access, and then give him rights to the character. What this will do will allow him to edit the character sheet and then join as that character. You'll notice down at the bottom my character has now or my player has now selected the character and it's almost ready to go. Depending on what my character needs to see, I can grant him rights and access to different assets and characters in the system. So if I wanted to share with him a goblin, I could right click on it and grant him access in the same way, or I could access the character sheet and grant the access from the top. Now that my player is set up, he has his character, and my goblins are placed, I think my encounter is ready to run. So I go to the left bar and I can go to the combat controls and then I can begin adding the goblins to the combat. As they're added to the combat, you'll notice their initiatives are rolled randomly. If you need to adjust their initiative order, you can simply drag them to a different initiative slot or you can drop them and it'll roll a new initiative. Once that's done, you'll notice that my player has the rolling initiative marker. This means that when I click enable combat, he'll be prompted to roll the initiative for his character. Once he rolls an initiative, you'll notice it automatically gets put out to chat and assigned via the combat tracker. Right now, it looks like my character did pretty poorly, so I'm gonna get to go first. In order to advance combat, I can check off who's completed their turn, or I can press the next turn button down at the bottom. If I need to find an individual goblin that I need to target, I can simply click on that piece and I'll be jumped to that location instantly. Here I can click on the goblin and then I can make a stat throw depending on what's happening in the combat. So I can run my combat this way and then Simply once I'm, and once I'm done with this turn, I can hit next turn. Now it's my player's turn. My player will be able to do whatever they need to do. And then when they are done, they can click a I've completed my action turn. And then it will jump the initiative back to you, which will then re-enable the combat tracker. So you don't have to worry about managing whether or not it's of if you can see the combat or not. It will pop up when you need it to be available. So in this case, let's say we missed a turn and I need to go back to my player's turn. I can reverse the combat, which will reset all the initiatives, and then I can manually uncheck my player, which will reprompt them to say, I've completed my turn. I'll have my player roll a damage check with the dagger that we created earlier. So you'll notice that my player's cursor appears on the map, and then I can make a melee attack and then I can make a dagger damage attack. 
So, once I have these damage rolls, I can actually use them in the battle. So if I select a group of enemies, let's say the dagger hits them all because it has a special power, I can then click on the dice and then apply the damage as needed. Here we'll say it's normal damage, which ends up KOing each one of these goblins. You'll notice that it did exact damage and enough to hit all of them to death. So, if I don't want that to happen, I can simply go back to the damage roll and hit the heal button, which will restore their health to the amount rolled in the chat log. Now that combat's over, I'm going to want my enemies to run away. I can move them away using the arrow keys, which will jump me to their vision, or I can simply drag them away myself. And with that, that about wraps up creating and running an encounter in GM Forge. Thank you for watching.